Okay, now you've talked about your idea of the energy internet. Can you explain that? Well, I'm an internet tycoon uh, who's taken an interest in energy, so the first question the energy people ask is, what the hell are you doing in energy? You have no business here. Uh, to which my answer is, well, you've been working on it for 50, 75 years and haven't made much progress, so please get out of the way. The, uh, the internet uh, history and the internet mentality have a lot to offer in innovating in energy, and I've been uh, trying to explore what lessons we can learn from how the internet was built to apply it to solving energy. You know, remember in the internet we delivered abundant, cheap, and clean bandwidth. So in solving energy, our goal is to deliver an abundant, a squanderable abundance of cheap and clean energy. So what's it going to take to get there? And what can we do with our talents to help bring it about? Well, we, you mean those of us assembled at this music festival in Austin, Texas? Yes, and the, and, and the larger uh, technology folks who see, see innovation, work in innovation day to day, and then they look over in energy and they say, my God, Tesla would be very comfortable in a utility because it's the same as he designed it. So there's two attitudes you can take with respect to energy from the internet point of view. One of them is that the internet is done now, so we now need to turn our attention to the next big problem, which is energy. And that's uh, a respectable point of view. The other one, which I've come to only recently, is, oh, no, no, obviously the internet is not done now. But um, energy is one of the three major industries that we should urgently be disrupting with the internet, like we disrupted publishing, journalism, merchandising, telecom, email. Uh, it's just next. We just have to disrupt energy. So bring the internet frame of mind to the solution of energy. To look at energy not as a ther thermodynamics problem or as a government policy problem, but to look at it through the lens of networking. And uh, my, my hunch is that that's, that'll be a better mindset. A more when you innovated with Ethernet, you didn't go up against the status quo. What did you do, and what lesson there can you apply to how we change energy? And we didn't do it by walking in the front door of AT&T and IBM, who at the, in the early days, you may remember, IBM was basically the computer industry, and AT&T was basically the communications industry. Those two companies did not build the Internet. In fact, they did everything they could to slow it down. We sold Ethernet inside of buildings where the FCC was not in charge, and we connected personal computers, which uh, IBM was, only, was late to discover. They were selling mainframes at the time. So the, it's really a good strategy to go around the status quo. So trying to convince utilities and public utilities commissions to change their way of doing business, we should be doing that, but that's going to take a long time. It's much better to find ways to, to innovate in energy uh, out of their regime. So where would you have uh, dodged the uh, utilities and the PUCs? That would be by innovating behind the meter, inside the house, uh, energy management within the house where they don't have any jurisdiction. If the internet is any guide, it'll be distributed power generation. The network will be less about distributing energy and more about exchanging energy from intermittent sources to intermittent sinks. That means if the internet is any guide, we're going to need storage, which goes to one of your earlier mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Energy storage is obviously, uh, the various forms of energy storage are likely to be key in, in uh, solving energy. So one of the investment themes of our little partnership is, is storage. Is storage. Yeah. What do you see in storage? I mean, that's kind of the holy grail. That's a game changer. If we have storage, everything is different. And that's exactly what happened in the internet. When the internet was, let's go back to 1969, there was no storage in the telecom system. In fact, the argument was you want to put the bits in and have them come out 150 milliseconds later. and to taking longer was a problem. So there was no, little or no storage. And, and by the time we finished building the internet, as if we're finished, look at all the storage everywhere. The routers have storage, the servers have storage, the cell phones have storage, the memory sticks have storage, mm -hmm. every, mm -hmm. every kind of storage, every which way. So uh, when we first set out to build the internet, we were worried that the information explosion, which, which was the term of the day, would overcome the installed copper plant of the AT&T company, 100-year-old copper, would it, could it possibly carry all the data coming from the information explosion? So we began by compressing data and sharing the communications bandwidth and conserving bandwidth. And then we built the internet 
do we use less bandwidth today than we did prior to building the internet? Do you think we, about the same amount? About 50% more? About 100% more? How about a million times more bandwidth than we used before? So if the internet is any guide when we solve energy, we're not gonna be using less, but according to the rebound effect or Jevons paradox, we're gonna have a squanderable abundance of energy and we're gonna use much, much more of it than we do today. And if the internet is any guide, we're gonna be using it for purposes that we cannot imagine.